Okay guys, welcome back to the channel and for those who are new, my name is Phil and I'm the Ordinary Watch Guy. I'm very ordinary, but the watches are very special. Some time ago, I revealed that I'd landed myself a Grand Seiko bargain. You can watch that video by clicking here or possibly here if you want to get up to speed on that. My journey into Grand Seiko began when I was exploring the watch boutiques of Paris. Again, click here uh, if you want to see what happened there. But basically, I fell somewhat in love with Grand Seiko just a little bit as in the boutique they were showing me some wonderful watches, including the Skyflake, the Shunburn and the Lake Sewer Before Dawn. I returned to the UK empty handed because frankly, I didn't have Grand Seiko boutique money to spend, but I set about looking at my options within a more modest budget. And what I found was an SBGA 101, a discontinued spring drive model on the fantastic 9R65 movement. The watch was bought pre-owned from a dealer in Japan for £1,375 plus BAT, which I still think is insane uh, money, really, for the quality of watch. And it's actually less than the entry point. It's a considerable amount less than the entry point for a Grand Seiko Quartz. At £1,650, including the BAT, £1,650, I decided to add an Artem sailcloth loopless strap and clasp to the watch to make it a little bit more sporty. And I've got every intention of wearing this on a day-to-day -day basis. The Artem strap and the clasp cost me in the region of £165. And adding that to the watch gave me a total of £1,815 for a spring drive Grand Seiko in near immaculate condition. The question is, after more than two weeks of wear, what do I have to say about it now? How do I feel about the purchase? Let's get into it. Let's start with what I like, okay? Well, there's plenty to like, and overall, I've been so happy with this purchase. I realize that I'm going through the new watch phase, so we need to take that into account. You get kind of high after a new watch arrives, it's like a new puppy that hasn't really had the time or the opportunity to go into a great big dog and bite you or shit on your favorite rug. I love puppies and dogs, by the way. Don't cancel me for saying that. Anyway, I do love this watch and I think that it's one of my best buys. For the money, it is unquestionably a bargain. I love the dial in a way that I really didn't expect that I would. I saw it as a compromise, quite frankly, when I bought it because I couldn't afford to immediately jump into Skyflake or the Shunburn. But my honest feeling here is that this dial has exceeded my expectations massively. Yes, it's just black, but in one light, it's matte. And in another, it's like a glossy pool of ink. The applied markers sitting on it are reflective, polished silver in appearance, and the seconds track is marked in contrasting white. These are classic combinations put together in, in the best way. The case is fabulous. It has a garter quality to it that is sporty, but the Zeratsu polishing and the brushed lugs are gorgeous. And I like the crown without the guards too. Flipping the watch over has the Grand Seiko Lion embossed on the rear case. No exhibition case back here, I'm afraid, but I do like the Lion. As a compromise goes, it's fine and I'm happy. The overall weight of the watch is nice. It's very comfortable. The size for me at 40 millimeters is right in a sweet spot there for me, but that experience will vary for everybody. The date complication is clear and easy to read on a color matched background with lettering in white. Mechanically, this watch is insanely good. The power reserve is 72 hours. The accuracy is plus minus one second per day. It came to me having been serviced 
in July. I do not know another watch at this price point that can approach these kind of specs. You really must hit me in the comments if you can offer me a watch for £1,800 that can do plus minus one second a day. I've had a comment about it being, a, being just being a quartz. To call it a quartz is to misunderstand the brilliance of the spring drive mechanism. It's not a quartz. It's not driven by a battery and it never requires a battery change. It's driven by the mainspring, like all mechanical watches are, but a rotor driven by the mainspring also generates a small electrical charge to power an electronic circuit and a quartz oscillator. This vibrates at exactly 32,768 times per second and then constantly compares the quartz oscillator to the revolution of the glide wheel and when needed applies a brake to keep both in absolute harmony keeping the watch hands moving with absolute smooth precision this is a brilliant mechanical watch i've always wanted this grand seiko movement i've always seen it as an essential must have for my collection and looking at the smooth sweep of the seconds hand I am delighted to have this watch on my wrist. I've been up close and personal with Vacheron Constantin, Jeje uh, Lecoute, Patek Philippe, Rolex, and the best of so many other watches. But I have never seen a second hand that m sweeps with this kind of serenity and grace. <laughs> What's not to like? Despite the fact that I heartily recommend this option as an incredibly good value way into the world of Grand Seiko and the spring drive movement, it's not the perfect watch by any means. I knew I wasn't going to love the bracelet it arrived upon and sure enough I took steps to swap it out at the earliest opportunity. The bracelet is a million years behind the mechanism, the clasp is so basic and it feels insecure to be honest. The bracelet itself lacks charm, there's no taper, while it's not uncomfortable the best you could say is that it's unremarkable. And at worst, it's a bit ugly. It does no favors to the watch at all, and it just had to go. It doesn't size easily, and I can understand people feeling frustrated that they can't get a perfect fit on their Grand Seiko when it's on a bracelet. There's a couple of half links in the mix there, but if you're anywhere in between, that's just bad luck. It's gonna be a touch tight or a little bit loose, and for a lot of people, and I'm one of them, that's just not good enough. In the summer, you have no micro adjust for the naturally expanding and contracting size of your wrist either. I'm shocked that a company with the genius to create spring drive cannot compete with micro brands on bracelets. I saw a bracelet on an Unimatic last week that I thought was better than the bracelet that came on my SBGA 101. That's pretty crazy. Unimatic watches are 10 times cheaper than Grand Seiko at general MSRP across the range. Case back, no major gripes here, but I definitely prefer an exhibition case back. I'm not gonna pretend it otherwise. There's nothing specifically wrong with the case back here, it's fine. But if I was gonna have a closed case back, I'd love to have the golden coin type case back from the vintage high beat models in the 1970s that's just a personal taste thing i guess for me the exhibition case back is the superior option but it's not a die in the ditch type of necessity literally that's it that's it that's all i have to moan or complain about on this watch i would still uh, prefer to have a spectacular Grand Seiko dial like a Skyflake or Omiwatari and eventually I'm gonna have to do it and save up and get one but this is far from saying that I don't like the dial I have here because I really do genuinely I guess the never-ending voyage of the watch enthusiast is chasing the next thing so let's talk about the new strap that I put on it 
so I disliked the bracelet enough to spend a whopping £160 on a replacement strap and clasp. I went with Artem because they are strongly recommended by so many people, and I went with their Loopless range, which is not right at the top of their offer, but it's, it's, it's pretty up there. The bottom line is that I'm so pleased with the strap, even at the price, that I'm looking to buy another one for my Omega Seamaster. The strap is waterproof, it's tough, it looks good, it's sporty, but it can certainly pass a Smarter 2. It's easy to change, and so you could swap in a leather strap quite easily. The clasp is super solid and feels great, very reassuring, and much more secure than the clasp on the Grand Seiko bracelet. If I was being very critical, there is room for a micro adjust on the Artem clasp itself, as the distance between the holes on the strap is basically like half lengths. The color's great. I got black to match the dial with gray stitching, which is a bit more subdued than pure white. The combination is superb, and putting the Artem strap onto the Grand Seiko, in my opinion, elevated it to become a really nice overall package that I am so happy with. I have a lot of straps of different kinds and none of them compare to the quality of this Artem strap at £160, which is less, a lot less, than most OEM offers. It still needs to be true. £160 is still a lot of money for a strap and a clasp. Is it worth it? Yes, I think it absolutely is. So, okay, there's my review of the Grand Seiko SBGA 101 on the Artem loopless sailcloth strap and clasp. I'm a big fan of the watch and the watch and strap combination. Let me know what you think of how it looks below and whether this might tempt you into snapping up a Grand Seiko spring drive bargain for yourself. Do you use Artem straps and what has your experience been with them? Are they too expensive in your opinion? Are you brand loyal to OEM straps? I want to thank you again for your support. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference. I appreciate the encouragement that I've been receiving since I launched the channel. It really helps me to keep things going. Stay safe, enjoy your watches, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.